Multiplication facts. Once students get to fourth grade, almost every math concept requires students to multiply. Long division, equivalent fractions, converting measurements, decimals, ratios, proportions, all of it. In this video, I have three different ways to help your students learn their multiplication facts. Welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Rachel Vincent, and I love sharing ways to help teachers simplify their classrooms and their teaching. I'm going to just start by saying that the strategies that I'm going to share for memorizing multiplication facts should happen after students have learned multiplication conceptually. They need to know the concept of multiplication. They need to practice with repeated addition and arrays and groups of, they need to do all of that prior to what I'm sharing with you today. Now, these concepts are taught in third grade in the state of South Carolina. So by the time they get to fourth grade, they know what multiplication is, they know the concept, they have those strategies in their back pocket. But what I want to do is to get them to do it a little bit faster because all of that builds on what we learn in fourth grade. It is a debate in education of whether or not students should memorize their facts. And my answer is yes. Now, is it okay if they don't have it yet? Absolutely, but they should work towards that. Do I want them to have other strategies of ways to get to the answer if they don't have it memorized? Again, yes. I teach my students lots of different things. I know some students take longer than others and that's okay and I'm gonna meet the student where they're at. The ultimate goal is to be able to multiply rather quickly so that it's not the multiplication that's stopping students from being able to solve multi-step type problems. Kids definitely need to have number sense and understand what multiplication is, but they also need to memorize facts and be able to do it rapidly. One of the things I read uh, several years ago that really kind of helped me sort of solidify my opinion on memorizing multiplication or any even addition facts is that math is like a second language. It has vocabulary and symbols and a way that they all go together that creates meaning. When learning a new language, you memorize new words. You also practice the sentence structure to help it all make sense. And just like when students are learning to read, we teach strategies for when they are stuck on a word. We need to do the same when they are stuck on a multiplication fact. I like to give my students as many different strategies as possible. They come to me from third grade knowing how to do circles and dots, creating groups of, they know how to make arrays, they know how to do repeated addition, and I definitely rely on those things, but I also want to give them other strategies of ways to get to their multiplication fact quickly. The first way is simple and most people think about this when trying to learn multiplication facts, it's skip counting. And what I really love of the fact is in fourth grade, students are introduced to the term multiples. And so they learn what multiples are, which in reality, multiples are just skip counting. So one of the things I have in my classroom are our multiples posters. They stay up year round and it is a quick way for students to find the multiplication fact because most of the time I'm wanting them to learn the new concept and skill in our fourth grade math curriculum than to focus on that multiplication fact. So if I can give them a tool that helps them get to it quickly, they do begin to start to learn them. But I also want them to not fully rely on the multiples. I do take them down the closer we get towards our state testing because I know we can't have them up. So I also use skip counting by teaching them songs to help them learn their multiples faster. Definitely, they really cling on to, of course, twos, fives, and tens. Most students know those from kindergarten and first grade skip counting, but threes and fours, they tend to get pretty quickly. So one of my biggest focus areas is six, sevens, and eight. Those tend to be the hardest ones for students. I'll also sometimes really focus on the 12s, but I find that 12 is really easy to do with repeated addition. So I don't always have them focus on memorizing that skip counting pattern. Another thing that I do that I have really seen a lot of growth in helping my students learn their multiplication fact are fluency quizzes. Now it's up to you whether you want to do it timed or not. I actually do a little bit of both. I do think it's important for students to work on their speed when it comes to multiplication multiplication facts. But I like to, if it's time to make it a little bit not so like it was when I was a student where you only had like a few minutes and the whole class was waiting on you type of thing. I have done paper fluency quizzes. I actually have a set of multiplication ones in my TPT store. I actually have them for division 
addition and subtraction as well. I'll link those down in the description if you want to look at those. But one of the things that I have really enjoyed is my school actually has fact fluency as our school-wide goal. Each grade level has a different focus, but overall it's all math fact fluency and we have really seen growth over the last several years of how well they know their facts. And so we use a website called thatquiz.org. It actually has a lot more than just the four basic operations. There's geometry and all sorts of other things on the website that you can make little quizzes for, but it allows you to actually set a time limit. So for fourth grade, they are supposed to do 100 multiplication facts in eight minutes and they have all year long to work on it. And so what I like about this approach a little bit differently than the paper approach is because I have to set the timer and so everybody knows who doesn't finish and things like that. Every, you know, you can kind of look at somebody's paper and see how many they didn't get to. But on the website, it just, it doesn't start until the student clicks on it. So each student clicks on it a little bit different time. When it times out, it doesn't, it's harder to see people's scores and different things like that. So so it does alleviate a little bit of that pressure that definitely of course is still that like time factor but I honestly think it's okay that's just my personal belief in it so students have access to that to any time on their Chromebooks but I also like to give them a paper speed version that they do individually so I have the little sand timers that you can get from the Dollar Tree and then it's just a piece of paper that I have put in a plastic sleeve or laminated that they can turn the timer over and just practice themselves. I have them based on different sets of multiplication facts. So I have fours, the fives, the sixes, the sevens, so that they can choose which ones they want to focus on. One of the things I do like about thatquiz.org is it tells them which facts that they should, they missed and that they should work on. So then they can grab the multiplication speed as we call it so that they can practice that when they're finished early finishers or morning work or different things like that. And of course, one of my favorite ways to practice any kind of math skill is with games. There are tons of online math games that students get to, but I have felt over the past few years that I want to sort of move away from some of that online component because I feel like they kids have been so inundated with online everything that I want to kind of bring it back old school and do more sort of hands-on type of things. So any kind of dice activity where they roll two dice, multiply it together, simple things. One of the actually team building Tuesday activities we do sometimes is multiplication war with just a deck of cards where they flip over, multiply whoever has the highest product wins that set. And it's just one of those games that can really go on forever and ever. Good old fashioned memory match is a favorite one where they're just matching the multiplication fact to the product and trying to get as many matches as possible. Kaboom is always a fun one where they pull a card, give the answer to the fact and keep the card if they get it right, put it back in the deck if they don't. And if they get a Kaboom card, they lose all their cards just for that extra element of fun. My focus on multiplication games obviously is to practice those multiplication facts, but my favorite kind of games really are the kind that is either something they can do individually by themselves or with a partner. When you get into big groups of games, those are typically the things I like to save when we're doing whole class, but any of these games they can do individually when they finish something early, for morning work, or if you do math centers or rotations, you can add that component in there. I have all of my skip counting songs, multiples posters, and several of these multiplication games available in my TPT store. You can grab the links down below. And if you'd like even more games to play with your students in the classroom, check out the video that's on your screen now.